Welcome to the first of the Football Basics series. My name is Justin and today we're going to be talking about how to count the numbers. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification if you want to learn how to run a successful football offense at any level. So I've noticed this issue happening a lot all throughout football from local competitions to the NFL and it's about counting the numbers. A lot of offenses are not counting the numbers pre-snap. All that this means is that, as an offense, you have to count whether or not you have more guys lined up than the defense does in any given part of the field before the ball is snapped. Why is this important? Well, because counting the numbers helps tell the quarterback where he needs to go with the football on any given play. Counting the numbers is usually the responsibility of the quarterback and the offensive coordinator, as they both have the ability to influence play calls and make adjustments. But all offensive players should look to make counting the numbers a habit if they can. Look at this formation. And he throws in that direction and trying to get into the end zone, and he can is Clement. Let's look at a few diagrams to see what I mean, and then we'll apply our understanding to some real game examples. Basically, counting the numbers allows you to see if you have more guys lined up on one side of the ball than the defense does. If you do, then great! You have a numbers advantage, because you have more bodies than the defense does in that area of the field. This is because one of your receivers is uncovered pre-snap, as there is no defender to account for him. So, in this first diagram, we can see that on the left side of the formation, we have two receivers versus one defender, based on our pre-snap slot assessment. The slot assessment tells us whether or not the most inside defensive back or linebacker is close enough to be a threat to our screenplay. So, as indicated by the dotted box outline, the reason that the free safety does not count is because he is backed up 10 or more yards from the line of scrimmage. I mean, if he's that far off, then your receiver may as well be uncovered. And additionally, the reason that the will linebacker doesn't count is because he is in the tackle box and not covering the receiver. This means that you'll have plenty of time to get your receiver the ball, and he'll have enough space to make a play after the catch. Now look, the diagrams aren't to scale, but just imagine that, as drawn, anyone who's outside the dotted lines is too far away to be involved or count as a number in the screen game. However, if you have the same number of guys that the defense does, or less guys than the defense does, then you're at a disadvantage because you're outnumbered. In this case, you should look to go elsewhere with the football. So in this diagram, we can see that there is a defender to account for each of our receivers, which means that we can't immediately throw the bubble screen because the slot defender will come unblocked to make the tackle. This doesn't mean that you can't attack that part of the field, it just means that any quick screens like a bubble or hitch screen won't work on their own. They would need to be attached to a read option run play to work, and in that sense they'd be the second read in the progression. Now if we take a look at a trips formation, the same rules apply. Based on our pre-snap assessment, we can see that we've got more receivers than defenders, which means that someone is uncovered. This means that we throw the ball immediately to the screen. And in this example, we can see that the defense has someone to account for all three receivers, which means that, you guessed it, we can't throw the screen. Now what happens when we get a little tricky with the formations and line up in, say, a bunch formation? Well, nothing changes. We still go through and count the numbers. So we can see in this example that we've got three receivers versus two defenders, which means that because we have a numbers advantage, we can throw the screen. And now let's say that the defense decides to rotate to a one high look so that the free safety can walk down to help defend against the bunch. Then in that case, we no longer have a numbers advantage because it's now three on three. Simple, right? So now that we know how to do our slot assessments and count the numbers pre-snap, let's take a look at some examples from the professionals over in the NFL to see how they take care of business. Okay, starting off nice and easy, we have an example from the 2020 Week 11 game between the Packers and Jaguars. The Packers are lined up in a 2x2 formation, and based on our pre-snap slot assessment, we can see that Valdez Scantling is uncovered as the linebacker has creeped in towards the box. Um, Scantling's the slot receiver on this play. Basically, this means that the offense has a numbers advantage and should throw the screen. I mean, honestly, anytime you have an uncovered receiver like this, you have to get them the ball. Play calls go out the window, just audible to a bubble screen and get them the ball immediately and let them run in space for free yardage. I mean seriously, just look at how much space there is. You could drive a freaking semi through there and it'd be untouched. It's also a really good job by the receiver here to stay aggressive and fight through contact. Um, it's plays like that that are the difference between making first downs and touchdowns and um, going three and out. 
So this next play came in the 2020 Week 11 game between the Chiefs and the Raiders. The Chiefs are lined up in a trips formation to the right, with their tight end lined up on the single side. Now, going through our pre-snap reads, you can see that there's only two defenders versus three receivers. And in fact, because the corner is backed up 10 or more yards, he actually doesn't count in terms of numbers defending the screen. So it's really a three versus one, which is a massive numbers advantage for the offense. The defense is literally screaming at us to throw the screen. If teams give you easy first downs like this, then don't hesitate to take them. You can see that the Raiders are so terrified of getting beat deep that they're giving so much cushion to the receivers. And you know, where there's lots of cushion, that means there's lots of free yards as well. Also, another thing that's important to note is that if you are playing at, say, the wide receiver spot or the flanker spot out wide, and your defender is backed up so far like uh, this defender is, then you feel free to come in and help seal the edge by double teaming the most um, immediate defender. Um, so as you can see here, the flanker helps seal the outside shoulder before peeling off and then looking for other work. Um, the reason he can come in and do this double team, um, we actually call it a bridge block. The reason he can come in and do this is because um, his defender is backed off so far that he's not even a threat. And if we watch the rest of this play, the defender who's supposed to be blocked by the flanker actually doesn't even touch the ball carry at all. So the reason we do bridge blocks like this is so that we can help guarantee that we say seal the edge on a bubble screen or or block the most immediate defender and create that space that we should have for the ball carrier to run. Um, because otherwise, you leave him, you leave that defender one-on-one -on -one with his guy and he might win that matchup. Um, but if we double team him, there's no chance that he's gonna win the edge there and we've still got plenty of space to run and make easy yards. This next example came in the 2020 Week 15 game between the Bills and the Broncos. The Bills are lined up in a trips formation to the left. So the same formation as the Chiefs were, except they're on the left-hand side of the field now. Going through our pre-snap reads, we can see that the defense has three defenders to account for the offense's three receivers, which means that we can't throw the screen. Now look, if the inside defender was backed up 10 or more yards, then we could throw it, but he's not. He's about eight or so, so we can't actually throw this football. But Josh Allen thinks it's a good idea. Look, he shouldn't be throwing this football but the slot receiver stuffs up and doesn't block his guy, which means that Beasley doesn't even have a chance to make a play, even if he does catch the football. The thing is, if you're gonna run screens, then your receivers need to know who they're blocking. An important rule to remember is don't leave a guy to go get a guy, which means that don't avoid a block that's right in front of you to block someone else who isn't. But I mean still, even if the receivers block the right guys and the ball gets caught, you still have an unblocked defender who's coming free to tackle the ball carrier. So the situation is less than ideal. Also, the play that the Bills are running doesn't seem to be your standard read option. It looks to be either a give or a throw read. Um, so in this situation, knowing that we don't have numbers to the screen and it's either a handoff or a throw, we're gonna hand this ball off to the running back and let him see if he can go make a play. Um, especially since we have a bit more of an even numbers game in the box here. Or, I mean, you don't do that, and you just throw the screen anyway and get your receiver killed, but I mean, that's up to you. <laughs> this next play is another example of bad blocking. Um, so this one came in the 2020 Week 15 matchup between the Eagles and the Cardinals. So the Eagles are lined up in an empty formation, and they motion the tight end into a quads look on the left-hand side of the formation. Quads just means that there's four receivers on one side of the ball. So, we can see that no one follows the tight end across the formation, which means that he's uncovered, because the defense is in zone coverage. If they're in man coverage, someone would have followed him across the formation. On top of being uncovered, the defense literally only has two defenders to cover four receivers. Our pre-snap assessment tells us to throw the ball to the screen, and thankfully, Eagles QB Jalen Hurts does just that. Unfortunately, just like we saw with the Bills in the previous example, the receivers don't block the only defender who is in any position to make a play on the ball. I mean, the fact that one defender basically stopped four guys on his own is just embarrassing. So how do we fix this? Well, because the slot receiver has no one lined up directly over him, and there's no one for a long way off, um, he needs to help block the closest inside defender and then peel off to look for more work. This is that bridge block that I talked about with the Chiefs example um, that I showed earlier. 
So when we do bridge blocking, it means two receivers double team a defender and then one receiver peels off as the other one overtakes the block. So usually the outside receiver will peel off after helping and the inside receiver will overtake and take on the block on his own. Um, now look, because the defense has only got four, uh, sorry, has only got two against four, it doesn't even matter if the outside receiver peels off the double team or not because there's so much space for the ball carrier to run and because the defense is so badly out leverage. I mean, the defense got seven in the box and only literally two guys to cover four receivers. It's, you know, they're really not in a good position um, and this play should go for, you know, heaps of yards and it gets shut down by one guy. I mean, ultimately, this play is a perfect example of letting the defense off the hook. If they want to come and line up in retarded formations and leave half the receivers uncovered, then don't let them get away with it. You gotta punish them for playing bad football. This next example came in the 2020 Week 11 game between the Lions and the Panthers. The Panthers motioned from two back into a trip sponge formation. As we can see, a defender follows the, rec the receiver across the formation, which indicates man coverage. This also means that the defense now has three defenders to account for the three receivers in the bunch formation, meaning that the offense does not have a numbers advantage. So based on our pre-snap reads, we know that we can't throw the screen. However, we have another classic case of dialing it in as BJ Walker throws a screen anyway, and surprise surprise, the screen gets shut down by the unblocked defender. Now given that the running back and the tight end are both in the box, there's no single side option to throw to. So, Knowing that the numbers dictate to go elsewhere with the football and not to throw the screen because we know it's covered, um, just looking at the defensive alignment here, the cornerback who's supposed to be covering the tight end is actually really close to the box. He's, act he's almost acting like he's also another defensive end, so to speak. So, you know, given that they're so flat across the line, I would just call a straight up speed option. And the read again would be that outside defender um, as the cornerback, um, as because the tight end would need to block the end. And that way, at least, I mean, it's still first and 10. At least you're checking out of a bad play call um, because you have a sound numbers advantage in the run game. Um, and that way you avoid getting a negative play on first down, you know, and <laughs> those negative plays on first down can really kill a drive, especially when you're throwing screens and guys are getting tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Um, so yeah, he'd probably need to check out of that play into, into a run play towards the, um, the tight end side of the field. Having a look here at some more bunch formations, um, we have an example from the 2020 Week 10 game between the Steelers and the Bengals. So the Steelers are lined up in a 2x2 formation, and they motion the H receiver, or the slot receiver, across the formation to create a bunch look pre-snap. Um, as we can see, no one follows the motion, which indicates that the defense is in zone coverage, but better yet, because no one followed the receiver across the formation, that means he's essentially uncovered, and the offense gains an extra number. I mean, talk about moving the chains. This is all just free money. If you want to move the change, you have to count the numbers. If you've got someone uncovered, you have to get the ball to them. So if we go through our pre-snap assessment after the motion, we can see that we have three on two. And because the safety is backed up 10 or more yards, he doesn't count in numbers for the screen game. So this tells us to throw the screen, but really it's even simpler than that. When you see no one follow the motion across the formation, that already tells you that you've gained an extra number. And if no one sprints down just before the snap, that's clear, you've got a guy who's uncovered. Another thing to look at here, um, which I'm really happy to see, is that the receivers do a pretty decent job of bridge blocking. So we can see that they double team the first defender, and then the outside receiver peels off to block the next defender. Now you might say, well, he didn't win outside leverage like he's supposed to do, you know, but the point is that he was able to help with the double team, peel off, and then make contact with the defender and take the defender where he wants to go. So it doesn't matter that he doesn't win outside leverage. Um, the important thing is that he makes contact with the defender and then drives his feet and drives him away from the ball and creates that space and that running lane for that ball carrier to go into. And then as you can see, the it's a big play, it's an easy first down, the ball carry doesn't even get touched, you know, that's just easy football. It's free money there, basically. And another important thing to remember here is that the receivers don't wait around for the defenders to come to them. They get aggressive, they move up, and they attack the defenders before they can move. So, I think it's Chase Claypool, he gets his hands immediately on that guy who's directly over them, he gets his hands and punches him, and gets him on the back foot, and then peels off, and he's able to, you know, stop that first defender from from gaining any footing and then that second receiver can come in and he just gets an easy head-to-head -head block on that defender and then that's the point with blocking like 
you have to be aggressive and you have to get on the toes of the defenders. You can't sit around, let them dance around and wait for them to come to you. You have to move up and create that space for the ball carrier. So if you're not aggressive as receivers and you're not moving and you're not making contact and initiating contact, then your screenplays are going to be shocking. You know, I see it happen all the time in local football with my own team and things like that. You have to be aggressive and get hands on the defender. That's the last thing the cornerbacks and DBs want to do. The last thing they want to be doing is shedding blocks and making tackles in open, you know, in open space. You know, that's the last thing they want to do. They want to run around and look pretty and, you know, get past breakups and things like that. So if you get hands on them, you know, and you initiate that contact, you're going to win most of the reps that you, that you have, you know, in the screen game. So the Seahawks ran the exact same play back in 2017 in week five against the Colts. So we see them motion Tyler Lockett across the formation to create a trip sponge look the same way that the, um, or a similar way that the Steelers did. And again, we can see that the defense doesn't follow Lockett across the formation, which means that they're in zone coverage, and it means that Lockett's essentially uncovered, and it lets the offense gain an extra number uh, for an easy screen pass. Again, once we count the numbers after the motion, we see that the offense has three guys versus two defenders, and it's an easy pitch and catch um, to Richardson for a, you know, a first down. Just an easy way to pick up some yards. Okay, now this next example came in the week nine game between the Bills and the Seahawks um, in 2020. And honestly, this play is really the reason um, that I wanted to make this video in the first place. Um, so we can see that the Bills are lined up in a quads bunch formation to the left with a single tight end to the right of the formation. Now, quads, like I said, just means that you have four receivers to that side of the field, and bunch means that the receivers are literally bunched up close together. The only difference from this and normal trips bunch is that the running back lines up directly behind uh, the slot receiver, the guy who sets the bunch. So the running back's behind the first three receivers, and that's quads bunch. Now, if we count the numbers pre-snap, we said that the offense has four receivers and the defense only has three defenders in position to cover the bunch set. Now, if we follow our rules, this means that the offense has a numbers advantage as we can block every defender and have one receiver uncovered who can catch and score the football uncontested. So, based on the pre-snap assessment, we know that we should immediately be throwing a bubble screen to the bunch formation. So in bunch, when we run the bubble screen, the ball gets thrown to the running back who's at the back of the bunch and the front three guys each man up and they block whoever's in front of them. Now, <laughs> the funny thing is that you see at the beginning of the play, if the offense snaps the ball quick enough, the defense only really has two guys to cover the bunch. It's only until later that the linebacker realizes and starts to try and, you know, shuffle out there to sort of be in position to make a play. Um, I mean, honestly, here's the thing. If your offense is set and the whistle is in, then just snap the ball. If the defense isn't ready to play, then too bad. That's their problem. Anyway, the point is the offense has four on three, which means that they should be throwing this screen. But no, that's not what happens on this play. The Bills, with all their grand wisdom, decide to motion the running back out of the bunch formation to fake a sweep handoff and then throw a hitch screen to the flanker who's in now in the trips bunch formation. This makes no sense. By motioning the running back, you're losing your numbers advantage, which means that you can't throw a screen to the bunch formation because it's now three on three. And that means there's a defender who's coming unblocked and coming free to shut down the screen. And that's exactly what happens. I mean, really, you're just doing the defense's job for them. They love it when you motion yourselves out of the play. And you know, this is important. This is why you have to count the numbers regardless of the play call. I mean, you've already got four on three here. So just throw the screen, forget the motion, forget everything else. Just call a bubble screen and throw it and let your guy score some easy points. You know, this, this play literally should be just that. It should be free points in a crucial game against a good team like the Seahawks. But instead, they just let the defense off the hook again. Honestly, given the situation that they're in, goal line, there should already be an option built in to throw the screen if the offense has a numbers advantage. If there's no numbers advantage, then sure, go ahead with the motion. But you still can't throw the hitch screen, which means the only way you'll score on this type of play is if you run a screen pump, which means that you fake the screen and the receivers fake their blocks and then the re they re release upfield after faking their blocks. Generally what happens is when you fake the screen, the defenders bite down on the screen and they leave a lot of space open in behind them for an easy catch and score. But, you know, we'll, we're gonna talk about screen pumps in a different video later on, but that's just, you know, my thought. And honestly, that's the only way you'll score out of this kind of look. Um, you know, worst comes to worst, you don't have the numbers advantage. I would just motion the running back back into the box 
um, you know, maybe set the quarterback up in gun, and then you have a lot more options as to calling pass concepts, run concepts. You have the whole thing at your disposal. Um, but yeah, I mean, just you've already got the advantage. Four on three, just throw the screen. It's easy money. Now the next example is of the exact same play, which funnily enough came two weeks later in the week 11 matchup between the Saints and the Falcons, with Taysom Hill starting for the injured Drew Brees. Now you think with a great offensive mind like Sean Payton calling the plays, you know, running the offense, you think that the Saints would be able to improve on the Bills mistakes and make the sound play. That is, throw the bubble screen if you have the number advantage with four on three. But nope. They run the exact same play, and they wind up with the exact same result. Now look, I understand it was Taysom Hill's first game as a starting quarterback, and it makes sense that he'd just follow what the coach tells him to do. But I find it really hard to believe that Sean Payton, who's a good offensive mind, is unable to count the numbers in a situation like this, or at least be like, hey, if they have less defenders than us over the bunch, then scrap the motion and just throw the screen to the running back. You know, and also given that the Bills ran this exact same play two weeks earlier and it didn't work, Surely they could have seen what went wrong and gone, hey, they already had numbers, let's just throw the screen and let our guy walk into the end zone for some free points. But unfortunately, that's not what happened, and they wind up with the exact same result. The only thing I will say about the, the Saints and the Saints and their formation um, is that I think the, the quads bunch is a little too close to the line of scrimmage. Um, I would probably push it out a bit further, a bit at least at least split the sideline and the line of, and the, the O-line be in the middle in between the sideline and the O-line because if your bunch is too close to the line of scrimmage it allows defensive tackles it allows ends and linebackers to quickly scramble out there you know and be in a position to make a play when they shouldn't you know some maybe you'll miss a block on the screen and you have to make one guy miss and then that gives the linebackers and stuff time to catch up and make a tackle and save the points you know save a touchdown or save a score um, so I would just get them to shift their bunch out a little bit further. So it's like once the ball is out there, it's just the receivers versus the DBs and that's it. No one else can, you know, make it over there in time to make a play. All right. So we've seen two failed attempts from a quads bunch formation. Surely, surely there's someone who can count numbers in the NFL and make the right read. Well, <laughs> let's take a look at this play from 2017 uh, week 11 matchup between the Eagles and the Cowboys. So, I know we're going back in a little bit in time for this, but it's a good example. So the Eagles are in a similar goal line position as the Bills and the Saints, and we're also lined up in a quads bunch formation. Now look, I'll be the first to admit that I'd be a little tentative to throw the screen here, because there's three guys directly over the quads bunch, and then there's that fourth DB, I think it's number 31, Orlando Skandrick, who's sort of splitting the, in between the O-line and the bunch formation. But from the, the broadcast angle, it kind of looks like he's in a position to play both. He's in a position to um, come and shut down the screen and come unblocked as that fourth defender and tackle the ball carrier. And, you know, maybe worse, he jumps the, the screen entirely and intercepts the ball for a pick six. Um, so the alley is a little bit dirty between the box and the bunch formation. Um, but look, I mean, I've seen Carson Wentz fit balls into some ridiculous windows um, before. And so I don't think that this is any challenge for him to beat this defender. Um, so he can get the ball out of screens quicker than most quarterbacks. But given that the defender is not exactly over the bunch formation, you know, he probably feels confident that he can out throw him and that his receiver or the running back in this case will have enough time and space to get into the end zone for the score. You know, either that or the screen's been dialed in by the coach. But like I said, it, I'll, you can see it from the end zone view. Technically speaking, the defense only has three defenders directly over the bunch formation. Um, so by alignment, the offense has the numbers advantage, even if it's just for a brief time because that fourth defender is going to scramble out there as quick as he can. So, I mean, I, I think the defender is able to get out there in time to make the play. Um, but... The thing is that because there's that difference in alignment, the running back is already coming downhill and at the best, it's going to be an arm tackle. And, you know, the running back's got a pretty good nose for the end zone, lowers his shoulder and just is able to force his way over, even if the defender makes contact, I think. Um, so, yeah, we see that happen here. And also, this is another reason why I would say in the Saints example for them to push their bunch formation out closer to the sideline. Um, you can see here that these guys are, you know, on on the numbers or, or slightly just outside the numbers. And the reason is if you've got defenders who don't know what they're doing and are kind of iffy about it and lined up in, in no man's land in between the line of scrimmage and the bunch formation and they can't really decide where they want to go, 
this is why you widen out because it forces them to make that obvious choice and if they can't make it they get stuck in no man's land and they're not in a position to play the run or play the um, play the pass either so what happens is you catch defenders out of position because they're not used to seeing these formations and you're as we see Corey Clement the running back is able just to turn up field and get in for the easy score before the defender can even get over there um, and then in saying that again the linebackers and defensive linemen have no chance to get out there because the bunch is that far out from the line of scrimmage you know what happens is you spread the defense and by spreading them so far you force them to declare what they're doing you force them to go and either match your numbers or you know, stuff around and, you know, freestyle it and not know where the heck they're going to go. You know, it's easy for the offense. We just count the numbers and go, hey, it's four on three. Easy score for us. But the defense, their their mind, oh, what's happening here? Oh, we don't know what this is. We've never seen this in practice. Oh my God, oh my God. And then before they can even think about what they're going to do, the ball snapped and it's, you know, you're in the end zone. So good job here by the Eagles, I think. And also think about this. If there wasn't that fourth defender, you know, guaranteed the Saints would have scored and the Bills would have scored on this exact same play if they had just thrown the ball because there's not even a fourth defender to cause conflict for the running back. He just walks in easy, untouched. All right, so now we know all that. Let's just say for the sake of argument that the alley is too dirty. We say that that fourth defender is covering the screen, is going to shut it down, and we can't go to the screen. So in that case, what we would have to do is you either go to the single side receiver or you run the football with the quarterback. So... Given that the box is so light, I'd argue that the easier thing to do would be for Carson to run the football. We can see that the safety is backed up and is also slightly cheating over to the quads formation. And really there's only five guys for the five O-line to block. One of which is at the second level in the end zone. So it's important to remember that when we're in empty formations like this, when we've got quads bunch or we've got trips to one side and twins to the other side, that in these kind of empty formations, the quarterback gives the offense an extra number to run the football. And in this example, it would mean that the offense has six guys versus five defenders in the box because the QB is technically uncovered, so to speak. He'd be your uncovered receiver if he was catching the football. Um, so the five O-line block the five defenders in the box and the quarterback should be able to, in theory, walk in basically untouched. Now, I would say though, because he's under center here, that it would actually be easier to, for him to step back and get into the shotgun um, because it's much easier to run the football out of gun rather than under center because under center means that you're restricted to pretty much just getting the snap and doing a QB sneak um, whereas if you're in the shotgun you can run all sorts of run plays like inside zone, power, trap, you know even outside zone um, and also when you're in the gun the quarterback can actually read the line of scrimmage so the O-line can take the defenders where they want to go and the quarterback can see the lanes that open up. Um, and, you know, as we see here in the end zone footage, like the center takes his guy where he wants to go and there's a massive seam straight through the middle with no defenders. So if Carson really wanted to, he could walk in practically untouched on this play. So yeah, that's just an important thing to keep in mind. Um, if the screen is a no-go, then your quarterback is your next... You can be a running option or you go to the single side receiver. All right, so this next example I thought would be good to show you because it's the quads um, bunch formation, but it's got a little bit of a, a difference to it. So um, the Seahawks here are lined up in what I would call a quads right broken bunch squeeze formation. So I know it's a lot to take in. So instead of the normal bunch where the running back is behind the three receivers, the running back, because it's a broken bunch, he kind of attaches himself onto the end of the bunch. And because it's squeezed, that just means they're all squeezed in close to the line of scrimmage. Now, this is a little funky. Normally, like I said, I wouldn't like to have this formation so close to the box. But again, the Cardinals, like we saw earlier with the Eagles, the Cardinals are running this, this funky, you know, um, flat line across the line of scrimmage. And once again, they only have two DBs to cover the four receivers that are actually lined up out there. Um, so, you know, immediately... We see, even though it's a condensed formation, when we count the numbers pre-snap, we can see that we still have four receivers versus two defenders pre-snap, which means we have the numbers advantage. So we're gonna go there with the football. Now you'll see that the Cardinals, obviously they aren't sending everyone. So some of the linebackers are gonna jump out and scramble out there to cover the four receivers. Um, so after the ball snapped, it actually becomes a four versus three, but this is fine for the offense because four versus three is still an advantage. Um, because one of the linebackers runs out to cover the screen. But even though he runs out immediately after the snap, he doesn't really get blocked either. But by then it's already too late. 
he doesn't get out there quick enough because he's out out of a lot he's out aligned um, he's out of alignment and the offense has the advantage there and also he doesn't really get blocked but he still can't get over there to stop the screen you know once again it's an easy pickup for the first down it just shows the power of when you count the numbers if you have a numbers advantage and also when you have an alignment advantage too when you know the defense is severely you know misaligned they're not in a really good position to make the play even if they're not blocked like I said, there was only two guys out there at the beginning. You block those two guys, there's plenty of space for that running back to catch the ball and turn up field and get an easy first down. I think this play was on third down, actually. So, you know, crucial pickup for the Seahawks there. And, um, of course, of course, you trust Russell Wilson. When I was watching this play, I was like, come on, man, count the numbers. You know, count the numbers. Please, please, just throw the screen. And then he threw it. And then, you know, I was just like, yeah, of course he's going to count the numbers. It's Russell Wilson. Um, and... It's kind of hard to notice when you're watching just as a general viewer, but you know when you see these things happening in, in games and you see quarterbacks not counting the numbers and making these mistakes, and the quarterbacks who do count the numbers, you know, you got Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, you know, Carson Wentz when he was at his best in the MVP year, you're just like, oh yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, these guys are the best for a reason because they're always paying attention. They're always counting the numbers. You know, Patrick Mahomes is another one. Just free money underneath, you know. Um, so it's, it's just a simple simple rule. You count the numbers, you you know, you know can take advantage of it, and you can make things easier. As soon as a defense gives you free yards and plenty of space, just take advantage of it. Don't, don't stuff around. Alrighty, so moving on to the last example for this video, we have a play here from the 2018 Week 5 game between the Cardinals and the 49ers. The 49ers are lined up in the same quads bunch formation that we've seen in the other examples, and they're on the goal line. So a similar situation to um, the Eagles, the Bills, and the Saints. Now, counting the numbers pre-snap, we can see that the defense has clearly has four defenders to cover the four receivers in the bunch. They've declared that, hey, we've got a guy for every single receiver, and you're not going to throw a screen on us. And, you know, that basically means the offense can't throw the screen as they don't have a numbers advantage. It's going to end poorly. So, knowing that, the quarterback has to either go to his one-on-one -on -one matchup on the other side of the field to his single side receiver, or he has to run the football himself. But... As we'll see, the quarterback does neither of these things, even though he knows he can't throw the screen. Now, if you watch carefully, I think this play was in fact designed to be a fake screen and a throw in behind to George Kittle. Um, so he fakes his block and then he tries to get in behind the, de the defense for an easy catch and score. But unfortunately, the defenders didn't bite on the fake and Kittle ended up being covered. You know, and as a result, the play breaks down. Um, but the funny thing is that it ends up turning into a sort of sound passing concept that, that looks a little bit like the smash concept. Now, I don't know if this is a planned thing that Kyle Shanahan had schemed up in the case that the screen and Kittle were both covered, or it was just good improvisation by the receivers. You know, honestly, I'd just say at this point, it's most likely freestyle. Um, but either way, it's an interesting example of running pass concepts out of a quads bunch formation. So the concept I'm talking about is smash, and what that basically means is it's a high-low read. So you have someone who runs to the flat, right? So they will run a shoot or a little short speed out to the to the sideline, and then the other receiver will run the corner route in in the end zone, in the red zone. It's a bit more condensed if you're on the goal line, um, but the point is it's a high-low read with a corner route and a shoot or a flat route um, to the sideline. So that's just, this is kind of what it turns into. So I think. Um, uh, Number 81, he does a little kind of whip out action here as a freestyle. And then for some reason, Garcon has the, the you know, sense of presence of mind to run a corner out almost. And it sort of turns into a smash concept, which is good because the quarterback rolls out that way and they're able to salvage the play. But yeah, it's just interesting, interesting to see that you can run pass concepts out of quads bunch, although it's a little funky. Um, and it's kind of like you divide the four receivers into two separate concepts. But we can go over that stuff in a different video. However, I will say I do like what Kyle Shanahan is trying to do here with the, the screen pump action. If you've got four on four or three on three or two on two, a screen pump is a really good way to catch the defense off guard um, and creates it creates a bit more options for your offense as opposed to going, oh, well, we're covered here. We've, we haven't got the numbers advantage, so we can't go there at all. So now we're limited to our quarterback or our single side option. You know, and if your single side guy is getting beat all game and you can't really get open, and uh, or your, your O-line's not really making their blocks, it's, it can be very limiting in your options if you decide, hey, we haven't got the numbers, we're not going here. So by faking the screen and running um, uh, 
getting your receivers to fake blocks and then run in behind the defense. It's pretty effective. Um, so by faking the screen and running a screen pump, it you know keeps the defenders on their toes and helps mix it up for your offense a little bit. And you know this can often result in big plays. It should be easy scores when you do any kind of screen pump stuff. It should be big pickups or easy scores, you know, for for touchdowns. Um, so look, even though the original screen pump play to Kittle didn't work, I really appreciate what Kyle Shanahan was trying to do, and I think it's a really, really creative play call. And it's a good idea, especially on the goal line, because, you know, on the goal line, defenders are ready to come down and shut anything down. They're not going to want to let anything pass that line of scrimmage, so it's, they can often be susceptible to, you know, routes in behind if you fake a, uh, fake a block and then you run past them. It's a good decision, even though the play didn't end up working the way it was drawn up, it's still a good decision, I think. So that's all for today's video. Hopefully you found it useful to see how counting the numbers can lead to easy plays and free yards, or at the very least, avoiding negative plays and preventing your players from getting killed. So I will be doing a part two to this video, but next time I'll be reviewing footage from the local competitions here in New South Wales, Australia, and discussing some game examples from my own team in order to show how these rules still apply to a competitive setting that's closer to the high school level in the US. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and remember, always count the numbers.